Well, hello and welcome to the Bathroom of the Dollhouse for another reading from Of the Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Eust Elfers for September 30th, the Day of Glaring Truth. And here at the top of the page is a visual representation of the Day of Glaring Truth. We have us a picture of, ooh, it's the palm of a hand with an eyeball in the center. That's right. Hey, is that a visual representation of your birthday? Who's to say? At least an adequate one? I don't know, but maybe as we do the reading, we will see why they chose. Not, not all the time, but sometimes we can make connections. But that's not altogether important. Now, what is important is it's September 30th and it's someone's birthday today. That's right. Is it your birthday today? Well, if it is, I just want to say happy birthday. And if this video finds you late, well, you know, I hope you had a happy birthday. That's right. That's what's important here. Wishing you happy birthday that's why we're here uh but for everyone else who's joining us randomly more ideally to celebrate the september 30th birthday i just want to say hello and welcome and i hope you enjoy yourself now before we dive in direct with the birthday read real quick let's roll some dice this is the die cast a birthday broadcast and so we like to live up to the namesake around these here parts but more importantly we do it for synchronicity's sake that's right what do we roll us a one and a one for two. You old snake eyes. That's right. I think that means you're crapped out. I don't know if that's what it means for sure, but what it also means is you're going straight to jail. That's right. You're older doubles. In any event, hey, what is synchronicity? Some of you may be wondering. Well, it's just you getting out into the world and letting the universe show you it's with you on your path. And you do that by following your dice numbers. And you can roll your own, but the attention's here for you for the snake eyes there. But once you get out somewhere, say town square, you assign some directional values to the dice, you roll them out, and uh, you look for your numbers. And you, you, you just start going whichever whichever direction that the dice tells you to go, uh, and for how long, and then when you're looking for those uh, numbers. And when you spy them, you chase after him with a hunger. That's right. It might be you see an 11 or a 2 just painted on the front of a of a, the hood of a car. Well, hey, chase after that car as long as you can until it goes out of sight. And then once it does, stop, collect yourself, and wait for another sign. Hey, maybe the number 11 bus pulls up. Well, jump on. That's one of your numbers, right? And you just ride that thing to, I don't know, maybe the number two stop and get on off. And what do you find? Well, hey, maybe you're on 11th Street and you're standing in front of a, uh, a big building with the number two in the address. And maybe it's a psychic. You know, they got the hand sign with the eyeball in the middle. Hey, the universe might be lining up a theme for you, too. You never know. But let me tell you something. Once you start to see those numbers just kind of popping out at you wild like you're going to start to feel the magic. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know, the psychic seems a little bit on the nose or on the palm of your hand, if you like, but uh, who's to say? In any event, that's synchronicity as far as I know, as quick as I can break it down for you. Let's get in with the birthday read. That's why you're here. Your month is September, your day the 30th. Your sign is 6 to 8 degrees Libra of the Libra 1 period specifically. And your quality and element is Cardinal Air. All right, September 30th, the day of glaring truth. Those born on September 30 are adept at ferreting out the truth and bringing it to light. Their perfectionist nature is manifest in their work habits. And these are people who really do their homework before opening their mouths. And although they can be impulsive, usually have some a heavy ammunition to support their opinions. In bringing the truth to light, some born on this day see themselves as representing a cause, and as such are idealists, no matter how negative the material they are revealing. The September 30 people are highly attractive, if not physically, then in their personality, and their appearance in public to them, well, as far as dress, speech, and demeanor are concerned, is important. And perhaps this is because they want to appear invulnerable. It is often true that September 30 people are concealing some truths about themselves that they do not wish to have revealed. And for the most part, those born on this day are not schooled or scholarly trained individuals, but rather people who have learned through the hard lessons of experience. 
And September 30 people can also assume scholarly status through their own form of thorough study and in their field can come become rather regarded as experts. It is usually very difficult to disagree with their arguments since they are able to amass such an impressive body of knowledge to back up what they say. And whether conventional or unconventional, September 30 people often use their appearance to attract attention, and they can be masterful in presenting a public image and in holding the attention of family and friends. Highly attuned to the human condition, those born in this day understand people and their motives very well. And they must beware of becoming manipulative in this respect and using others to further their own ends. And there is certainly a good chance that September 30 people will grow overly accusatory, judgmental, or fond of pointing a righteous finger at those they believe compromise the truth in some way. And this tendency to be an accusing angel can really get out of hand, and can even make others adopt an instinctively defensive posture in their presence. And September 30, must, uh, September 30 people must thus work on being more accepting and less condemning. On the other hand, uh, there's a lot of hand analogies today, those born on this day are usually quite capable of defending themselves and although sensitive, can shrug off many an attack. And due to their innate self-confidence, it says in parentheticals, and since they are largely self-taught uh, at what they do and have graduated from the self or the school of hard knocks, it says, they have an essential toughness which will always protect them. And September 30 people should try to remain sympathetic to others, however, by displaying this toughness in defense rather than offense. And since they inevitably turn people off when they get too aggressive. And those born on September 30 are generally good with money and can make shrewd investments which guarantee their financial security. Well, all right, quite the birthday breakdown, I will say. Uh, so let's dive into a little bit of a commentary I like to provide uh, with some notes here on your birthday breakdown. All right. September 30, the day of a glaring truth. All right, you're adept at fettering out the truth and exposing it, no matter the quality of the information being brought to light. And you're a perfectionist who, while impulsive, the reading says, usually has evidence to support your opinion, and you won't usually give your opinion without having gathered said evidence. All right, and that's important, I would say. Some people just throw out stuff like they, man, they don't even know. Maybe they saw a documentary and now they're an expert, right? Uh, now it says uh, you are an idealist in revealing the truth, but considering how many people just freely give their opinion without looking into the subject matter they're discussing, I'd say your approach to show restraint in that vein is very idealistic too, um, and not just admirable, all right? Uh, and a highly attractive in personality and physicality, which seems to be a Libra quality, uh, if, uh, as often as it gets uh, mentioned it as of late. Uh, the reading also conveys appearance is important to you, and also a seeming Libra quality. <laughs> but I like this idea that it's such a quality uh, may stem from trying to appear invulnerable, all right? And that it's often true, some born in this day are hiding a truth about themselves, all right? Now, while I'd assume that's hardly uncommon, uh, it's also seemingly ironic facet of someone taking with revealing the truth, uh, if it's true anyhow, right? Uh, the reading also conveys a good understanding of the human condition, and you must be careful of manipulating others to get uh, to get your own way, right? Also being mindful of becoming an accusing angel uh, toward those you see compromising the truth. I don't think I've heard accusing angel before, um, or have I didn't really pick up on all the accusatory finger and hand uh, metaphors they were using either. Uh, any of it. Interesting pitfalls that could stem from both your idealism and your line of work. Uh, it's, it's interesting me, uh, interesting to me rather, as it uh, probably would have taken me a while to potentially see such things uh, being a result. 
So all in all, uh, like I said, a well-rounded birthday uh, breakdown, strong, knowledgeable, you stand for something, uh, but you're also human and you can falter in understandable ways, despite all your um, strong characteristics. That's right. So like I said, a well-rounded birthday. But in any event, hey, that's been the birthday breakdown. Let's dive in with your numbers and your planets. That's right. Those born on the 30th of the month are ruled by the number 3 as 3 plus 0 equals 3 and by the expansive planet Jupiter. Those ruled by the number 3 often rise to the highest positions in their sphere. And September 30 people may well be driven toward the top in their search for financial and material success as well is independence. Jupiter lends an optimistic and expansive social outlook to those born on September 30. And combined with the influence of Venus, which is the ruler of Libra, it accentuates their idealism. All right, hey, what I had to say about your numbers and your planets? Let's get back to the notes, shall we? Uh, number three in the expansive planet Jupiter. For some of that, could have been a secondary star, but chose to be the biggest planet in the solar system instead kind of energy. All right. You drive to ascend in your fields and you reap the benefits. You maintain your independence and our concerns with society. And the reading claims that it's this Venus energy conferred by Libra that uh, emboldens your idealism. An aspect I'd argue is love-driven to some extent, or at least in the romantic uh, Persigian uh, terms for that Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance kind of philosophy. Uh, if you've read that, you know all about the philosophy of quality. So maybe dive into that if you're interested in someone else's ideas on romanticism. Uh, <laughs> it's a good read, but it's a long one. You got to do your homework, but it says you like to do that. So maybe check it out. Any event, that's been your numbers and your planets. Let's dive in with your tarot. That's right. One of the more eclectic uh, New Age philosophies, ideologies, if you like. But it's in the book. Uh, it's fun uh, to see what it's all about. Expand our horizons a little bit, even if we don't take any of it home with us. That's right. So let's dive in with your tarot. Third card of the Major Arcana is the Empress, who symbolizes creative intelligence. And she is the perfect woman, the ultra-feminine Mother Earth nurturer, who embodies our dreams, hopes, and aspirations. The card represents positive traits of charm, grace, and unconditional love, but also the negative traits of vanity and affectation, as well as intolerance for imperfection. All right, hey, just a little bit of a copy paste job with this. They didn't really personalize it for you, if you like. But hey, let me try to pick up a little bit of the, of the slack there. The Empress for that creative intelligence, the dreams, hopes, and aspirations. Positive attributes of charm, grace, and the negative of vanity and intolerance for imperfection. Yeah, don't get too in your head about your own legend, I would say. All right, You want to avoid, uh, at least I'd argue, all the pitfalls showcased in the breakdowns. You want to maintain your modesty even in the face of notoriety. All right, You start leaning in on how, how great you are, and you may find it conversely subverts the original heart in your work. Uh, even if it's still there, all right? So don't get too haughty, I wrote here. That's right. And I think as we dive in with those born on this day, we might see and understand uh, some of the people who maybe got too big for their britches. That's right, and how it affected them later. Uh, that's kind of why I wrote, don't get too haughty. All right, so that's been your tarot. Let's dive in with your health. All right, your health. Since their physical appearance is important to them, September 30 people can usually prevail on to eat sensibly and exercise, and though they may not be naturally inclined in this direction. In fact, those born in this day must usually make a great effort to avoid alcohol consumption, cigarette smoking, coffee drinking, or indulging a sweet tooth. And September 30 people are encouraged to apply their love of investigation to ways of improving their own personal health. And those born on this day often show great talent for the kitchen, where they may learn firsthand the value of fresh food, both for enjoyment and health. All right, there's your health. 
Let's see what I had to say in the notes. All right. Hey, we come back to appearance. All right. Uh, sensible diet and exercise. Avoid your indulgent vices, apparently. And again, this is another Libra through line that's been carrying on from, through the past few days. Uh, apply love of investigation to improving your health. Oh, that's an interesting one. Um, I'd say apply this to mindfulness as well. They didn't really dive in on that. Uh, again, don't let your head or your ego get too big. Lest you subvert people's perception of the work you do, revealing the truth, which I think is important to you. At least that's what the reading said. So yeah, don't let getting too big for your britches subvert the work you find important. All right. Uh, and you know what? That might not sound like health, but it's important because that's part of your life, right? Uh, so let's dive in with some advice. All right. As if you haven't gotten enough already. All right. Despite your impressive knowledge and arguments, you are not always right. All right. Become aware of your manipulative tendencies and don't browbeat others. All right. Be more open and accepting in your thoughts. Put your house in order. <laughs> That's all right. That's been your advice. Let's see what I had to say here. You aren't always right. All right. The hard truth to swallow for anyone. Um, so carefully your manipulations again. And it's funny how we do it, even with little things. Uh, try seeing how you do it without realizing it, too. You might find yourself if you're trying to be mindful of it. It's like a little thought experiment. You're like, man, I just manipulated that person into doing something. It's just the dumbest little thing. Um, and careful that brow beating. That's right. Yeah, read the room. That's what I say. Pick up on them social cues. It's a huge thing. Um, but brow beat people, they may not want to be listening to the truths you're revealing. And they might just be being kind. You know what I'm saying? Uh, maybe that's not necessarily what they mean by brow beating. They don't want you just uh, preaching from the pulpit pit and people already get the point. Just like I'm doing right now. So, if any, hey, that's been your advice. Let's take the energy down just a hair and move on to your meditation. All right, here we go. Each of us confronts our own truth on our own path. All right. Once again, each of us confronts our own truth on our own path. All right, that's your meditation. I'm not going to break it down for you. It's your birthday. That's for you to uh, get what you need out of it. I'd throw some spin on of it that might not be helpful. So each of us confronts our own truth on our own path. There's your meditation. Let's move on. Your strengths and weaknesses. That's right. Your strengths. You're curious. You're knowledgeable. And you're impressive. And your weaknesses. Are you ready? Hold your breath. We're judgmental accusatory and you're self-righteous oh self-righteous you know honestly if we're someone who reveals the truth you probably knew all this already and uh, ideally you're already working on reining it in that's right but hey if it's a weakness sometimes we could turn them into a strength that's right how do you do that don't ask me I, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? you'll work on it or you or you think about it and you you, you flip the script on it any event, that's not why we're here today. We're here to read your birth reading. So that's been your strengths and weaknesses. Let's move on to those born on this day. And so let's not only find out who shares your company, but uh, we like to examine something that I find important. And that's figuring out your passions and your inspiration. You know, what's going to get you out of bed in the morning doing backflips, ready to get to work. And that's finding your passion. A lot of times people... Uh, they don't know what it is. You know, I've met folks out in the out in the wild and ask what they do if they like it, and they don't. And you know what? I think it's perfectly understandable. Get out in this world, get out of school, and uh, you gotta jump right into a job. You don't. It's just the first one you can take, so you can start making some money, paying off them student loans, or, or putting food on the table. But there's no time to figure out your passions. I don't necessarily. Uh, put in the work to figure that out. Um, a lot, that a lot of times that's the struggle too. Uh, and so. I always thought, or I always thought, I, I figured this would be the perfect opportunity to not only uh, see who shares your company, but see what they did to get in the book, right? Maybe we can find out what their passions were and take a little bit of inspiration from as much. Uh, at least that's the aim, all right? Hey, so let's dive in with those born on this day. We have Euripides, the a Greek ancient playwright, the tragedian, it says, and he wrote Medea and the Trojan Women. 
We also have Ellie Weisel, the Jewish Nobel Prize winning Holocaust writer for Souls on Fire. So we got some writers here. We also have a Truman Capote, who's a self-educated novelist and writer of In Cold Blood. Also Breakfast at Tiffany's, I think, and his true crime novel was a definitely a shift and that's what i was kind of warning about don't get too haughty all right uh so three writers we got we got uh, uh jean marie len was a french nobel prize winning chemist of synthetic molecules uh lewis milestone was a russian american film director of all quiets on the western front a walk in the sun and a walk in the sun it was also a screenwriter editor and a producer uh, Deborah Kerr, a film actress, Johnny Mathis, the singer, Angie Dickinson, a film a TV actress of Police Woman. We also have Michael Powell, a British film director of The Red Shoes, with a lot of filmmakers and people in the industry here, too. Pompey the Great, the Roman ruler, Anne H. Martin, a suffragist fe uh, feminist, first woman to run for the U.S. Senate. We also have Frankie Lyman, a rock and roll singer and legendary falsetto. Oscar Pettiford, a jazz bassist. Robin Roberts, a Philadelphia Phillies baseball pitcher and a two-time uh, National League strikeout leaguer, leader and a Hall of Famer. We also have Lester Maddox, the Georgia governor. W.S. Merwin, a poet and translator. That's interesting. Polyglot there. Uh, Peter Leftnick, a Dutch uh Post-World War II finance minister, Victoria Tennant was a British stage TV film actress and married Steve Martin, says. We also have a Michael uh, Owen, was a Lebanese Christian general, A-O-U-N, not quite sure how to pronounce that. Yuri Libanov, a Soviet expatriate uh, theatrical director and an actor. And we butchered a few names, so uh, let's do some butchering there. It's not done in malice, it's just hooked on phonics. Didn't work for me with other names, that's right. And with that being said, uh, taking the, all the birthdays being read, that basically rounds out your birthday read, that's right. Except to say, your season is fall, your sign once again is Libra, of the Libra one period specifically, and your quality and element is Cardinal Air. That's right. And this has been September 30th, the day of glaring truth. And you know what? I don't know if the hand with the eye necessarily uh, meant anything per se, but they did make a lot of hand analogies in that. So that might have worked for it. And this has been Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and you Stelfers. I have an affiliate link for this book down in the description if you're interested in picking yourself up a copy, uh, supporting the channel, uh, supporting Gary Goldschneider and you Stelfers who made all this possible, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, yeah, this thing makes a great coffee table book. It's going to get the ice broken, literally or figuratively, considering its girth, but it's going to get the conversation started if you have any parties or have some company over. Uh, that being said, that's not what's important. What's important here is wishing you a happy birthday. That's right. Happy birthday. And like I said, if it finds you late, I hope you had a happy birthday. But for everyone else who joined us, I want to say thank you. And I hope you enjoyed yourself. And I hope you join us for your birthday read. But lest we forget your daily numbers, get out there and let the universe show you it's with you on your path. I'm telling you, once you see those numbers start to pop up, you're going to feel the magic. And you might just see some magic. That's right. All right. Once again, happy birthday. And take care of yourselves.